Rocks of Rocks presents the No Limits Music Show. Hey, what's up, guys? You're watching the No Limits Music Show. We're here at Duff's, and I'm Angelina Del Carmen. I'm Roger Clark. I'm George Shufton. We have a great show for you guys today. We've got music videos by Anthrax. We have Sean Esau from White Zombie giving us an exclusive update of everything that's going on with the band. From her show here in New York City, she has an art show going on. We also have Jeff Waters from Annihilator, one of the best guitarists in metal history. Oh, wait, are you a beer, apparently? Uh, yeah, Roger owes me a beer. We'll explain why later. They take Metro cards here? Right? I don't know. Maybe. Let's go it's find not out. Even a real Metro card. The No Limits Music Show starts right now. And we're here at Dubs, another episode of the No Limits Music Show. And there's, as usual, so much going on in the metal, the hardcore, the heavy music world. And of course, we gotta start with Dr. No from the Bad Brains, man. In life support, all of a sudden, we saw him this summer playing beautiful I, I music. I saw him twice this summer, which is weird because I had to, I saw the. I mean, I hadn't seen the Bad Brains since I think it was like the Ritz with like Murphy's Law years ago. And then all of a sudden this summer, we were at Black and Blue, and played with the Regulators. Amazing, amazing. And then I went to see Foo Fighters at City Field, and at the end, they were the surprise guests. They nice. came out with uh, with Dave Grohl, who obviously yes. the Washington D.C. connection there. <laughs> You know, giving the respect to these guys who are so influential. They look great. I mean, you know, but I mean, you know, things happen. But, Life oh. is so fragile, man. Yeah. And they haven't said what happens, but they're just asking for prayers. Yeah, keep right. praying for him. We send him all, all the yeah. best. The yeah. entire Bad Brains camp, we are with you guys because, you know, the Bad Brains are an institution when oh it comes to music. They influence, I mean, lately I was speaking of Dave Grohl, but so many. I mean, you, if we walked up to any punk rock or metal musician in this town, they're going to say there's a pretty good chance they're influenced by Bad Brains. Obviously. Absolutely. And yeah. speaking of influential bands, Metallica. So we have evidence now. Apparently, we do, you know, Scooby Doo and the gang found out it was through some kind of evil. You know, evil. They are releasing a new album. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna master it all crazy again? <laughs> That's do think, right. Do you think that we're gonna hear the bass this time? Hopefully, there'll be some bass involved. <laughs> very sneaky. Very I do sinister. Like, I do like that magnetic a lot. You yeah. know, it yeah. seems like you know, with the bands like that, we we're talking about Megadeth last time. Whenever a band who have so many years, so many amazing records. They probably already released the best records in their career a long time ago. Every time they put something out new, it's kind of like taken with a grain of salt. It's like, ah, all right, whatever. You know, right. it's not taken with so much special. Uh, Those are the bathroom songs. Yeah, yeah. You go see them live and like, new song, okay, bathroom. That, uh, <laughs> new song, beer. But that, which is not cool. You're like, you should give it a chance, give it a chance. And, and Metallica, come on, is it going to be bad? Probably not, you know? It's like, no, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, and they're playing the day before the Super Bowl, big, cool concert. Right. I wish I were playing the Super Bowl concert because I can't take most of the acts now. I can't. I, I, I hate them, but I would actually like to see them do the national. Anthem. Yeah, yeah. yeah I saw yeah, them do it in yeah. June, and I, it was great. There was no vocals. It was just guitars, and it, it was pretty great. A la Jimi Hendrix, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. I liked it even more than that uh, Billy Joel national anthem at the. Uh, you didn't World like it. Series. Right. It was all right. I would like to see him do piano and singing. A little more. I'm a musician, you know. I, I yeah, like all yeah, the, the yeah. instruments. I but, missed uh, it. I missed it. I was in the elevator. I saw half of his head. You were tailgating. And I came. I was I not was. tailgating. I was buying was a beer. Stopping. Okay. I, no, I, 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 no, that's disrespect. I was not buying a beer. But uh, that reminds me. That's why Roger owes me a beer because me. I'm actually from Kansas City, and I always got to support my not Royals. <laughs> you guys won the World Series. Well, we Congrats. Had a, little, a beer bet going on. So. Uh, so we have the maiden beer. Can I smell it? The it smells beer. delicious. <laughs> uh, Behemoth. Already has a second beer coming out. Motorhead. Motorhead, right, yeah. They even have like shot glasses and cups and all kinds of things. Slayer. And, and uh, Makes kiss. total sense. Makes total sense. Kiss, right? yeah. But they're yeah. all dark beers, I noticed. <laughs> Nobody's making a light beer for right. Roger. And I'm going to be the guy like uh, asking like, I don't know, like, uh, like, I don't know, who would I ask? Poison, make a light beer, please. <laughs> Who's going to come up with an alcohol free beer? Justin Bieber. <laughs> the Biebs, yeah. Biebs, who's always got your back? No, I don't want that. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's no, like no that's like coffee with no caffeine. Come on. That's true. I it's agree. ridiculous. I think there might still be a little bit of caffeine in uncaffeinated coffee. Is there a little bit of alcohol still in non? Like old tools has like like like. And last night I went to see Mazda and Judas Priest. Nice. And on the way there I saw an email announcing that Daniel Svensson has left in flames after 17 years because wow. he wants to go home, spend more time with his daughters, with his wife. He's going to start a brewery as well because it's one of his passions other than music. So that's cool, you know, that finally somebody was like, hey, you know what, metal and beer go well and well together instead of paying Budweiser to make the beer for everybody else. Why don't we have a little yeah. bit of that market? Yeah, a little share, like a little percentage from that those sales. So that's cool, you know. Get on the horn. We can be official tasters. I like it. Yes.
We're inside Sacred Gallery in New York City with Sean. How are you, first of all? Hi, great, thank you. Welcome back to your old home. It's so good to be back. <laughs> and of course, you're presenting your new work, so obviously we got to start from that. Why don't you tell us about this exhibit? Because I see a lot of different types of art within one artist. It's cool. I've been down in New Orleans since White Zombie broke up. I've been shooting uh, photos for pretty much 12 years solid down there, and uh, I've had a number of shows three solo shows in the past few years, and uh, I just got invited to come up and have a solo show, and I thought I'd bring a little bit of everything that I've done over the years. So it's a mix of your previous exhibits and some new work as well? Yes, yeah, um, well, actually, this, the newest work is my most recent exhibit. It just came down last month, and um, it's called Soiree Devolution, and that's the large prints you see behind us. And then some of my very early work I did with the old Polaroid land camera, black and white, kind of ethereal, looking thing, so um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a little bit of everything. At the beginning, what was what turned you on so much about black and white photography? I've always loved it, I, I don't know, there's just a, it, it kind, of, um, kind of masks what decade or era the photo's from. A lot of people think photos I took are actually photos from the turn of the century, so I, I love that, you know? <laughs> Obviously not these like garish, like full color ones, they don't look a little more like paintings, but, um, but yeah, the black and white ones, I really love that. And uh, do you have like certain cameras that you like using when you're doing black and white versus when you're doing colors or when you're doing portraits? Do you have like different, like, you know, things that you use as a tool? Well, I, I really did love the old land camera, but you know, you can't get that film anymore. So I've gone digital, I use a Canon and um, you know, there's, there's ways you can kind of achieve the effects that you want. And as far as uh, computer technology, do you use any of that to enhance your pictures or you're more kind of like, oh, whatever my eye sees, that's what I really want to capture? No, I, I um. I'll lay out my photos. A lot of times I sketch them out and build sets and all this kind of work. But um, So I, I know what I want, but I do use Photoshop um, to tweak things here and there. And, you know, if it's digital, for sure. There's a lot of kind of music works nowadays that you still use, you know, analog instruments to create digital sounds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's great when, you know, you just use the tools at hand. Right. These are pictures that you took and then you painted, or? These are just enormous prints. These are exactly what was on my camera. These are not, a lot of people think they're compositions um, that I've um, layered them in photo. Nothing's been done to these in Photoshop. These are exactly as I shot them. So, uh, so, so there's a lot of elaborate work going into it, props and like setups and? Building the sets, uh, yeah, I, I hand sewed a huge backdrop, um, tons of lighting, lots of, um, you know, almost like actors, you know, I had to like yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah, sometimes it was like a little like Menudo, like if the costume fits, like <laughs> this is the person that's gonna be in this photo if, if they can fit in the dress, you know. It took me a good part of a year to do this, uh, to do this photo shoot. Would you take this exact photo shoot and maybe create like some skits or maybe even a, like a short film? Oh no, <laughs> no, it's, film has never, um, I've, I've had a number of people try to get me into art directing on films and stuff and it, it's just not, I just like a, a flat image. I like a, you know, that's, a, <laughs> that's enough for me. I can't wrap my head around a whole film. <laughs> maybe, maybe in 10 years. <laughs> you let Rob do that one. Yeah, he, he yeah. Can handle that. Yeah, he can keep that realm. I, I like just, a, yeah, a flat image on the wall. <laughs> but you still play music, correct? Yes, yes. I, I, still, uh, I still play some with my band Rock City Morgan, New Orleans, and I have a great new band called Star and Dagger I've been playing with for the past couple of years. Um, my friend Dava Shewolf is up here in New York. Um, she's on guitar, I'm on bass. Our uh, friend Vaughn, who's down in New Orleans, um, she's actually, that's her. <laughs> she's in a few of my photos, she's one of my muses. Um, she's, uh, she's our singer, and uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. And why the bass? What made you like end up being a bass player? Because you know, people usually go for the drums or the guitars, but what was about the bass that, you know, I love the bass, but for you, what was like a, you that know, made you want to play bass? Well, you know, it's funny. I actually uh, I moved up here in the 80s and was going to CBGBs and all the punk shows and hardcore shows. And I immediately made friends with this guy named Leon. And he wanted me to play bass for him in a band called Anti-Warfare. It's like a peace punk band, right? So I was like, all right. So I went back to North Carolina over Christmas and I bought a, uh, bought a bass for $50 off of one of my sister's friends who was in a punk band and brought it back up. And then that band never quite happened, but then I had a bass, you know, so <laughs> when Rob and I met, we both wanted to start a band and I had a bass. I mean, I grew up playing a lot of instruments, so bass is pretty easy to pick up. I got a guitar at some point too, and I wanted to play guitar, but you know, it, it's a lot quicker to pick up a bass, especially after playing violin and piano and stuff, so 
it was it was kind of easy. So you got some schooling when it comes to like you know piano and violin. That's how you started with your parents being like, oh, you got to learn that. I was performing with old blues bands and nightclubs when I was eight years old doing jet, like blues improv. It's kind of a weird chapter in my life I almost forgot about. <laughs> I had a really uh, a very pushy teacher on the, on piano. I had to go to classes uh, three times a week and. Uh, it was, it was very intensive. She was trying to get me to be a concert pianist, and I, the only way I could um, get out of it, eventually I had a nervous breakdown when I was like 12 and quick, so it was just so intense. Uh, but she had me in nightclubs, she had me doing concerts, it was kind of intense. So I've had a lot of music training <laughs> since yeah. I was little. I was transposing and composing and improvising and all that. Maybe those who made you rebel a little bit towards more aggressive music, that you're kind of like, oh, I want to do something with music, but not that. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Probably more, I mean, I would be more rebelling against my parents since I grew up listening to, you know, all the bands of the 60s. My parents were really into Rolling Stones, Beatles, Hendrix, you know, Janis Joplin, all that. But, you know, punk was definitely a little bit of a answer to that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. There's so many years of being an artist, obviously photography, obviously music. What are some of the things that you've taken from that? You know, because obviously I'm sure by now you can look back and be like, oh my God, I can't believe it's been 10 years since this song came out or this came out. So what are some of like those memories that are really like, you know, always with you? Um, the main thing for me is I kind of keep coming back to themes, you know, even when I was in high school, I was kind of obsessed with graveyards and decaying houses. And I don't know, there's a certain, um, Im just imagery I'm kind of drawn to, and I always have been. So even as a child, you know, we go digging around in the woods in North Carolina and try to find, you know, animal bones and things. So, yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> Finding that dark side. Yeah, it was funny because people were like, what do your parents think about that? And I was like, well, I have, like, I have a huge collection of dead things in my house, <laughs> to, put it, to put it quite simply, but um, it's, you know, human skeletons, human skulls, taxidermy, all kinds of things. They're like, oh, what do your parents think about this? And I'm like, well, half the stuff is things my, my father gave me as gifts, you know, so I think they approve, you know. Obviously, we've got to talk about your book. So I did I'm in the band because uh, it was just after Katrina, and everybody lost so much in New Orleans, and I've been down there for a long time, and there was a huge hole in my ceiling, uh, in, the, in my roof, I mean, on the third floor of my house, and it just caved all the way through to the first floor, and it happened to miss my uh, storage closet that had all my white zombie memorabilia, and I thought, I better scan all this and document it. It was, you know, I photographed every tour and took pho I'm a fan of all the bands we toured with from Caius to Danzig, you know, so I didn't want to lose all that, so I just kind of started scanning and photographing things, and I really was just doing it for myself, and a lot of people saw what I was doing, and friends, and they were like, I think fans would like this, you should share it, you know? So then um, I ended up getting a book deal, and they it was just going to be a coffee table photo book, but uh, they asked me to start writing little bits here and there, so it kind of turned into a little combination of kind of some uh, tour stories, war stories, <laughs> horror stories, no, no, good stuff, it's all fun. Which one would you say is the standout story when it comes to White Zombie that's in your book, or maybe one that didn't make it to the book that is kind of like, damn, that was a good one, <laughs> of so many? There are things that have come up, and I'm like, oh, how did I forget that, like when I met Joan Jett when I was 16, um, there's some... Back in North Carolina, yeah, there's so many stories. Um, any page from like the days we toured with Pantera, because touring with Phil and uh, Dimebag, those two are such cut-ups and trying to make you laugh like every set, even when they're on stage, you know, they're like, like you know, just doing anything to make you fall over and laugh. And uh, they were pranking us every day, you know, on stage, off stage, anywhere, you know, just any page from. The, my notes on the White Zombie Pantera tours, <laughs> probably, the, probably the best memories and some of the craziest times. And I, I know you hang out with Phil a lot. Is there any chance that you guys are going to jam one day too? Because that would be a pretty cool project. And I know Phil's always looking for something else to do. That would be kind of cool to see you guys play music together. It would be fun. I, I love Phil. He's got so many projects already, though. I wouldn't want to put another one on his plate, you know. He's got, I don't know how many bands right now. <laughs> we all lost count. <laughs> I lost count, too. <laughs> But I love him. I love his lady Kate, and uh, I love all his bands. We just saw him play with Danzig in New Orleans. It was amazing. And uh, yeah. Anyway, he's he's great. No, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave him to his own <laughs> devices there. So he says, hey, we're doing a band, and then maybe. Yeah, who can say no to Phil? <laughs>
Anything coming up that you want to tell them about? Um, yeah, I have a new band, Star and Dagger, I was talking about earlier, and uh, we're working on new material, so hopefully we're going to record in this uh, next year. So next year, maybe they will hear some new music? Yes, <laughs> I think so. And any chances of White Zombie doing something anytime soon, maybe a reunion show? Because obviously, it's been a while. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, the time is right, but, um, you know, according to our lead singer, the answer is no. <laughs> Eight Ball says no. <laughs> you kind of need him. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people are like, oh, get another singer or tour without him. But I, I hate when bands do that. You know, it's like bands are not the same without the, the lead singer. You know? yeah, especially a guy like that. <laughs> kind of yeah. changes the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. um, but we do have uh, something coming out, though, this uh, summer. Uh, this amazing box set coming out with Numero Group. It's all of our early vinyl, and they're re-releasing it all in vinyl with a 50, 50 pages of liner notes and amazing graphics and flyers and t like old bootleg t-shirts and all the stuff that people have probably never seen. And there's some actually some tracks that I didn't even remember we recorded <laughs> that are in this box set too. So that's gonna be a pretty rare, cool item. Are some of your pictures gonna be on that too? Yeah, actually I, I did, uh, I, I let them go through my stuff and take whatever they wanted. So they actually, it's a company out of Chicago and they drove down and just, yeah, took a lot of my stuff up, up there to work on the booklet, yeah. Hope you get it back. I know, I, I do too. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Yeah. All right, thank you very, very much. Hey, thanks. And very, I'm like, not, nothing but the best with this show. Everybody so in the New York and in the area, you know, definitely come check it out here at Sacred Gallery. Roger, time for a music video, and this one's from Anthrax, one of my all-time favorites. It's called Evil Twin. It's the first song from the album set to be released early next year. Long-awaited new record from Anthrax. And this one, as always, the band not shying away from addressing some serious issues while thrashing out at the same time. It's Anthrax, Evil Twin, on the No Limits Music Show. Check it out.
Inside Megaforce Records in New York City with Jeff from Annihilator, man. Thank you so much for being here in New York, man. Thanks, it's great. Great to be in New York City from my uh, coming down from above, which would be Ottawa, Canada, and then, uh, of course, being in the, the great Megaforce office, I haven't been here before, so it's great to, to talk to Missy and the people here about uh, some history and history of thrash and metal. And you're a part of a lot of the history too, you know what I mean? You have been, on, been doing this for over 30 years already. Did you think when you started that 30 years down the line you would still be doing it and being happy doing it? Because every time I see you on stage, you're happy doing it. Yeah, oh yeah. I've been around for a little while, haven't I? It's, it's great to be just one of many musicians, guitarists, bands out there that are still going. And uh, Well, I know there's not a lot of us still going from 30 years ago, but you know what I mean, like just to be in the scene after all these years, or even for the first album. I mean, everything after that was a gift or bonus or a whatever you want to call it, but uh, no, it's great to be here, still. Of course, we're going to talk about your brand new album, Suicide Society. And first thing I wanted to know is what led you to name in the album that? Because I think, I kind of know, but I want to hear from you. Well, actually, there's, what is there, nine songs on the record, and, and what I, have, I think always do is, if I see something on TV or somebody says something that sounds neat, I'll write it down or for a subject for a song and um, the I guess I just wrote down last year maybe write a song about uh, the humanity how just terrible we we not, not so much in the past because well, obviously we have been in the past but how horrible we're being to each other today in the world in general and how horrible we're being to everything from animals to the environment to the oceans the the air everything so it's kind of a cliche subject and that's what i, I wrote it down everybody knows about the damage we've done and and, and this and uh, i'm not a political or very well educated person or anything like that but I, I thought okay there's a good idea to write a song about and then you realize just how really how bad things are if you take the top the top five or ten things that we need or that are important in life air, uh, and, you know, everything you can imagine. We're not getting better at any of it. It's all getting worse. When did you discover that you had a musical talent when you were like, okay, I can, you know, I, I identify with these songs from like Sabbath, the old school metal, and then when you were like, okay, I want to write my own songs? Well, I think before the metal thing entered my blood, I was uh, seven years old and my mother said that I walked by a music store and somebody was playing an acoustic guitar. Uh, through the window you could see there was it was probably a music store um, and I stopped and I started uh, just refusing to leave I wanted to watch this guitar player even though I couldn't hear him uh, and she brought me in I think she brought me in the store to watch um, finally but that was it she knew well I better get this kid a guitar and that's how it started I played this huge oversized acoustic folk guitar that was probably about the same size as the guitar and took lessons uh, for, you know, maybe for a year and then didn't for a few years. But like real basic things, learning a couple of chords. But then I think around 12 or 13 years old, my mother, she had some good instincts about putting me in classical guitar. And that was the best thing because I only took maybe a couple of years of classical guitar, but that was enough to give me the basics for guitar playing. I think once the disco era ended, I was already full on into guitar music. Um, and by that point, I had played guitar, not really taken any lessons anymore. I was playing it because I liked it, and I, and I got kind of good at it by the time I was 14 or 15. And then, you know, you see ACDC, Sabbath, Kiss. And then you get into Priest, Maiden, Scorpions, Loudness, except, you know, it gets heavier and heavier as the, the years go by. And then you get the Bay Area Thrash, Testament, Exodus, you know, Anthrax, you know, Metallica, you get in Slayer, you get Venom, and then, you know, you, I just mixed it. I was reading that one time you went and you knocked on the door of one of the newspapers in your hometown and they yeah. didn't even give you any like 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 a five minute interview or something. And yeah. That to me is crazy. Yeah, I mean with, you know, as long as your ego doesn't get in the way, time usually uh, gives you more of a, a sense of what happened in the past and, and you know, you know those things about what you could have done different, oh if I could go back in time and then other people answer and say I'd never look back, and you know, but I do for fun sometimes. But um, with North America, it was pretty simple. We came out in 89, we basically left in 93. Um, in 93, for those who weren't around at that time, uh, in 93, there was a, essentially a, almost like a, a, an unspoken memo that would go around every record company, all the big labels and small labels, and the memo would say, uh, delete or fire or whatever, dump, dump off, get rid of, 
any band that you have that is, uh, had the word metal in it, in their biography, get rid of it. So labels were coming to their bands and saying, listen, we're sorry, we have to let you go. And there was only a very small group of bands that were allowed to keep going. We had the Pantera, Sepultura, Biohazard, uh, Biohazard, different style of music. But that's the quote I got from my, <clears throat> sorry, my label guy at the time was, sorry, Jeff, we're going to have to let you go unless you change the name of your band and change your music to either Sepultura, Pantera, or Biohazard style, we're going to have to let you go. And that was in 93, and therefore we were let go. I was very lucky and surprised because I figured I was going to have to go get a real job and, uh, okay, well, that was three albums doing what we did was pretty amazing and mm -hmm. I could have stopped there and been the happiest guy in the world musically um, but I was uh, uh, my manager at the time said w w wait a second Europe and Japan want you let's do a new deal so we did and you know from a financial standpoint I was able to buy a house build a recording studio buy a car it was the first time I ever had money in my life in 94 95 and the first time I learned or wanted to learn about business, um, first time I really, you know, had to sit down and learn about studio recording and engineering and, and, and this, which became a new hobby slash career. Um, and we were out of North America, our own country to, uh, and United States. Most bands were gone. Well, I'm getting off into another subject here. <laughs> okay, go ahead. I think that, I mean, I think unless you have anything else you want to tell no. the fans right now. What else could I then, say? I've said everything. Right. But except thank you very much. And we have a new album and we hope you like it. So we're here to spin the Wheel of Misfortune. Are you guys ready? Let's see what we land on. 17. Best song to have sex to. So let's find out what these guys answer. Are you ready? Any Star Guys song? Uh, the Dying Fetus, Kill Your Mother, Rape Your Dog. Dear Lord. Well, I'd like to know what is the best song to have sex to? Carnivore, Jesus Hitler. That's, that's a good one. Maniac Rise, Swallow My Evil. For some reason I've been on this uh, Peter Gabriel kick, so I'm just going to say Steam. Living Dead Girl. Uh, one of Us is a Killer by Diligent Escape Plan. Grateful Dead. Get down, get to it. Hey, ride the lightning. Hey, whiplash. Get Down, Make Love by Nine Inch Nails, the cover of the Queen song. I have no comment to that. All right, time now for a live performance. And this one, New York hardcore legends, Madball. Hey, Freddie Madball, happy birthday. This one is called The Beast. It's live from Holland. And if you've never seen Madball live, Here's your chance. They're amazing. They're sick. Go for it. Madball, the beast, on the No Limits Music Show. <laughs> Land in the mirror, who's that? Slay the sight of fire that will die. Walk the way in the attack. The brain of me have never been black. The heart of the city of Jack is his own now. Look here, boy, boy. The sun is low. The train is in the door. Now the information that I can't take. Chris, we might as well. Turn it on. Get your toe. The belly of the beast that I can't take. Can't escape a single track Then my friends think I wanna fight back Turn for real, I come back Last for self, I want my life back Where is the same as my life is? So far, we're ever gonna stop me Falling in here, it's a boss of a mean life head I can't see that Dragging home Dragging the door Belly of the beast that I can't touch Where's the mind is wrong Take it out I'm in the belly of a beast and I can't touch Let me see your fucking hands in the sky, ladies and gentlemen Don't drop me like that Grab a hole, grab a tiger Like, baby, look a rice grab 
to me in any way, so forget. Right. Except for the kid. Oh, I have a child, that's right. It's Immaculate Conception. Yeah, no. Uh, Talented. <clears throat> well, uh, Twin Peaks uh, soundtrack, that's besides the point. Uh, Steelheart, Never Let You Go. Never Let You Go! Yeah, yeah that's the, yeah, yeah. You know. Here we go. That's when you go. That's when you go. Oh, you go. Yeah. Go? Joe, go. You know what I have to think about it too much? is. Changed in the House of Lies of the Deftones because that song right. is just groovy and it moves you. But pretty much any song about the Deftones really just makes you like groove and yeah. it, it, gets, it gets, ex it gets everybody song, excited. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm excited right now just talking about it. Uh, oh yeah. my God. Cold shower for everyone. Cast cold shower. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'll move over a little bit. Yeah. It's like <laughs> sitting in a washing machine. I love it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I they want to know yours because. Hurry up! Um, I mean, okay, um, hurry up, Angelina. My, my favorite is uh, Janet Jackson, the Velvet Rope album. Like, any of those songs are great. Right. But then, like, a really good one, like, when you had a lot of whiskey, is Nine Inch Nails, Closer. Yes. It's a good one. How does the chorus go again? Can't look There's a line. Anymore. There's a line in that song, right? That it says, I want to fuck you like an animal. I want to feel you from the inside. Oh, God. This is so awkward. Yeah, yeah. It's time to sign up. Thank you guys for watching the No Limits Music Show and we will see you next time when we have Vision of Disorder because they couldn't be with us this time because they're with our families getting ready for the CD release show. Pick up the new album Race to the Ground and we will see you next time right here at Dubs in Brooklyn. Cheers to Jimmy and Dubs, the entire group, and you guys for caring about heavy music. Peace. Can I be singing this song when we come back? Let me do that. It's that beer. Yeah. Who's not hard? <laughs> You're not hard. Don't speak with them. Are we running? That's a really bad answer. Uh, we're rolling, dude. What? Seventeen! And seventeen is... It's good to be back.